Okay, thank you so much, you guys, for being here. Uh, my name is Mario Costa. I work for a company called FreeNow in Hamburg, Germany. I'd like to first thank you for your time after lunch. I'm pretty sure uh, I would be very sleepy, but I hope you are not. And uh, I'd like to thank you also, the guys that are running the conference, for uh, inviting me, and uh, it's such a pleasure to be here. So today, yeah, I'm going to talk about RabbitMQ and Spring Boot. I'm not sure how many from you are developers or how many from you are Java developers, Kotlin developers. So maybe if you raise your hand, if you have any, on one, two, three, yeah. Okay, cool, good. Yeah, um, well, um, as you know, uh, RabbitMQ, well, this is the conference. Uh, uh, Spring Boot doesn't have a very good way to connect to multiple RabbitMQ. I mean, it has, but uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about it and how to make it even simpler. Talking about simplicity, According to the dictionary, simplicity is a quality condition of being easy to understand or to do. Yeah, it turns out that life is not simple. We got complex stuff around programming, even in life. If you're mad, you, you know what I'm talking about. And uh, yeah, from the Java perspective, for example, if you take a look at the code, I think it's hard to understand. But this is the implementation of hash, uh, hash map in Java 8. It's pretty complex. I cannot just sit down and understand. It takes me half an hour. So I get, I get started. And it uh, turns out that um, there are complexities around it. Uh, hash maps, for example, they are meant to be performant. And they have a lot of uh, uh, logic on, on the back to make it happen, to prevent collisions, and so on and so forth. And uh, I, I'm kind of glad I like to simplify things, and this is kind of a code that I wouldn't uh, like to work with. But uh, we are lucky that we have uh, Spring for the Java uh, environment, Java and Kotlin environment. So uh, Spring is a web framework that was around for years now, and uh, pretty much I think it was in 2014, so five years ago we had the Spring Boot launched, the very first version of Spring Boot. And Spring Boot was just wrapping up all the things that Spring does and putting this in a very easy way for Java developers to start uh, services. And with the hype of microservices, we got a very good input from Spring with this. And uh, for example, if you look at this code, uh, it's using Spring Boot underneath, providing a hello world. Uh, endpoint, which is just very simple, of course, but uh, it takes me a couple of lines to make it happen. And uh, don't don't underestimate this. Spring Boot in the back in the background is doing a lot of things, uh, holding a lot of complexities, and making that easy for the developer to start with. For example, in this case, we have uh, Tomcat running, let's say, with I don't know two megabits of limitation on the put uh, requests. And uh, if you come to query, we have this simple uh, endpoint working with the hello world, which is pretty easy. And then um, I come to the revenue queue, which is our context here in this uh, conference. This is a simple implementation of a publish, cons publisher consumer logic using Spring Boot. So just to give you some thoughts about it, I'm consuming from a queue one, which is automatically bound, bound here uh, with the exchange one, routing key one, whatever. And I'm publishing messages here and consuming from here. And it turns out that we got this uh, in the console, like uh, receiving this message. Pretty simple, pretty easy to start with uh, Spring Boot with RabbitMQ. However, where is the configuration? Uh, which service or which server am, am I connecting to? And it turns out that we have this uh, easy way to set up configuration with Spring Boot, like setting Spring, RabbitMQ, host, port, username, and password. Um, you can set up anything. So it's very decoupled, the configuration and the code, of course. And this is awesome from the perspective of a developer, I think. At least I think this is. And, uh, yeah, uh, it happens because Spring favors convention over configuration. So whatever you have in Spring Boot, it's already configured for you to uh, start running the application. It, it would be production ready. You can just deploy. Everything is going to be configured. If you have to configure something differently, you can, of course, you can do this. And that's the approach that makes things easier with Spring Boot. 
So yeah, let me get back a little bit. Um, as I mentioned, I work in a company called Freenow. This company is from Hamburg. Um, I, I moved from Brazil to Germany last year, the beginning of last year, and uh, the name of the company was My Taxi by that time. And eventually, in the middle of this uh, year, we were rebranded to Freenow. Uh, some numbers, we've got over 150 developers. We run over 300 JVM-based microservices. And last uh, month, we handled in the live cluster over 21 million uh, messages in revenue queue, which is not a huge number. It's a big number, but not a huge number. And uh, uh, in the end of the last year, actually, we had a different requirement, which was to introduce another revenue queue, another broker. And uh, we wanted this broker, this new broker, to be shared among some of the environments that we had. So eventually we couldn't use our main uh, broker, our main cluster, RevenueQ cluster, and we got this into this uh, requirement, and then, okay, let's just configure ourselves to, to use the second broker, to connect to the second broker. And we found out that Spring does not offer this support. Uh, you cannot say, hey, Spring, Spring.RevenueQ1, something RevenueQ2, something, it, it cannot be configured this way because Spring Boot is only expecting one single instance or one single broker in the configuration. Of course, you can do this uh, manually, but from the, uh, from the configuration, from the properties, you can only set one broker. And then we found this problem. Okay, we cannot move very simply like this with this second broker. And it turns out that we thought, okay, we can use Spring Cloud Streams to solve this. Uh, Spring Cloud Streams is awesome. It's, it introduces an abstraction, so we can talk to maybe Redmond Q or maybe Kafka uh, and eventually have multiple connections or multiple uh, uh, brokers, talking to multiple brokers in the same application. But the point is that we had over 300 microservices, and we didn't want to add an abstraction layer and change 300 microservices. So the cost, the, the effort to change this bunch of services would be very high, and we didn't want to move to this direction. So what we thought was, uh, what if we implement a library that does this for us? that um, instantiate the beans, does the, the, the connections with Spring, uh, instantiate the connection factories, the container factories, the rabbit means, and all the things that would make the connection uh, work and the uh, annotations in Spring still work just fine. Yeah, we thought about it. So, okay, let's do this. But um, some of the requirements that we had were that we must have some library that was ex an extension to Spring, AMQP, would have minimal code change in the in the subs that would be using this. We could, of course, not have any uh, internal library. It should be decoupled from whatever we have from the internal systems. And it would require little configuration to start with. And I think the first, uh, not the first, but the more important one is that it shouldn't be intrusive. If I introduce the library in a service that was running before with a configuration with one broker, this, of course, shouldn't break the system. And that's what uh, we are uh, striving to. So we, come up, we, we came up with this uh, Spring Multi Rabbit, which was a library that we created. Uh, and Spring Multi Rabbit is going to be used uh, simply this way. We, we put a lot of thought on this to make these requirements, um, uh, to achieve these requirements. And you just have to uh, import this library, Spring Boot Rabbit. Currently, it's still uh, available under the group ID MyTaxi because, as I mentioned, we were rebranded uh, this year, so the, uh, the library was launched last year. Not last year, but the, the beginning of this year. And uh, we wanted to come from this configuration to this configuration and have everything by default uh, done and configured with a Spring. So that's uh, how we implement it. Whenever you have a default Revenue Queue uh, server that you are connecting to in your application, uh, you can still have this connection as a default and you can have additional connections. And if you take a look at this uh, configuration, we have here uh, Broker 2 and Broker 3. But these are just names that I created for that. I can call this whatever I want. 
and I can have multiple, I can have thousands if I want, of course, in the system, uh, if it makes sense. But uh, uh, I'm just saying that uh, it has no limitation on how many uh, brokers you can configure. And eventually we came from this kind of code, uh, which was connecting and listening and publishing um, from and to uh, one, one single broker or one cluster. And we introduced uh, this code, which seems a little bit, uh, yeah, scary, but uh, I'm gonna break it down a little. For example, I had before this consume one, which was listening to Q1. I have the same, exactly the same method here. Uh, I introduced two more consumers. The only difference, the only consistent difference between them is that these two other ones have this container factory broker two, in this case, container factory broker three. And that's where the dots are connected. Whenever you say container factory broker two, it's gonna use the beans, you're gonna connect to the beans that are produced from that configuration that you uh, add, that additional configuration that we add in the, the previous slide. And the same thing happens here when we publish messages. So before we were uh, using Rabbit template, convert and send to the default broker, and to send to the additional brokers, uh, I need to use a connection factory uh, context wrapper. So it will bind the connection factory and unbind it afterwards. So uh, here I can uh, provide just a lambda, like a runnable, for example, and I can have this, uh, this uh, binding and unbinding automatically done via this, uh, this class. So even though it seems like scary, but it's not, uh, it comes that introducing more brokers is of course some, some kind of requirement that no application, no system have. And uh, uh, eventually if you have, you can still figure out how to, to do that with this library. So, uh, and then we, uh, we can take a look at this uh, different uh, servers that I was running just before the, the conference, the, this talk. And I have the, the queues receiving each, of, each one is a different server running on Docker. And I have, uh, receiving, I have been receiving messages from, from all of them. As a next as amplification of this the this code before, so we got to make it an extension of Spring AMQP. We got to have minimal code change, so whatever we have before running Spring and RabbitMQ wouldn't crash and wouldn't require too much um, uh, change. Nothing related to our internal system and. Uh, it requires very little configuration for you to start with. So just a couple of uh, properties more, and of course uh, setting up the container factory and uh, the context, and it's of course non-intrusive. Uh, well, why not share it? So we thought about sharing this library, and that's what we did uh, on January of this year. And uh, after, after publishing this library, I wrote this blog post in our uh, internal uh, blog, and uh, uh, I was just uh, teaching how to use the library, showing uh, how to configure that, and how you can just easily uh, get it done. And eventually I got a comment from a very nice guy called Gary Russell. Gary Russell is uh, the project lead from uh, uh, Spring Integration AMQP. And Gary asked, hey, would you be interested in contributing this work to the framework? I said, well, this is awesome. Let's do this. So this is definitely yes. I, we, we were since then um, very busy, but we got to create a pull request now. So this code, this uh, feature is gonna be contributed to the framework soon. There's a pull request already open for one of the, the pull requests. I need to actually do two pull requests to have it done. And uh, yeah, this is a work in progress that we have, but eventually you can still use the library as it is now, and in the future it's gonna be by default inside the Spring Framework. And uh, yeah, I wanna just share with you some statistics. One month ago, I posted this in my LinkedIn account. Uh, we had 
we don't don't have a, this contribution yet done. So people are still using the library, of course, and we had over six hundred uh, six thousand uh, downloads on the library. So one month afterwards, we've got ten thousand downloads. It's not a, a big number, of course, but if you consider the the use case is very strict use case. So application that must conf uh, be, be talking to multiple. Uh, brokers at the same time, at the same moment. So we got this a uh, little bit high, I think, number of downloads for this library, so people are using that. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much what I wanted to talk about. Yeah, if you want to take a look uh, at our website or our blog, we have some, some tech information there that's nice just to follow. This library is uh, published in GitHub, FreeNowTech, Spring, MultiRabbit, and the code that I was just sharing here in the presentation is available in my GitHub account in this uh, repository, MultiRabbit Talk. And this are my social networks, my blog, if you are interested in following or anything. So I'm open for any questions that you might have, if you have any. Thank you. I'm ready here with the microphone. Hello. Have you encountered any issues actually while one of the brokers is being throttled or like the application struggling while publishing to one and that impacts the other connection to the other broker or are they completely separated? Sorry, I'm not sure if I understood your question, but uh, you're talking about the, the problems with the connections when there are different brokers, you mean, right? Yeah, so like in your application, you suffer from a specific issue with one broker, so not both, but just one of them. Does this impact the application overall, or does okay. the application handle this gracefully, and how? Okay, uh, the answer is no, because uh, uh, when we use Spring, we have the beans and connection factories, and in this case, for MultiRabbit, we create different connection factories for each uh, of the brokers. And uh, it's a caching connection factory, for example. So they are pretty different. If there is a problem, happening with one of the brokers, it cannot uh, uh, cause any trouble with the other connections, or it should not. Of course, if you have in your application some flow that depends on one to reach the other, it might be a different answer, but the answer by default is no. Yeah. More questions? Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Our use case was that uh, we wanted to move on with our configuration to start using the Spring Cloud Config, which provides uh, can be uh, can be enabling the, the application to grab configuration from Git repositories, for example, and it has a feature of hot reloading. And this hot reloading depends on a uh, random queue. And the point is that we wanted this random queue for hot reloading to be shared among some environments. But it, there are other use cases, for example, whenever um, if the, there are rules, strict rules around payment data, for example, in companies, and I don't know, the payment data or the payment infrastructure must be in a separated account in AWS, let's say. And this is uh, one of an, another a use case that can be, I mean, uh, it's not a problem of the RabbitMQ cannot handle the much of uh, message, of course, this is not a problem. The problem is that whenever we have a strict uh, use case that you must use a different RabbitMQ, this comes uh, a little bit tough without the library. And that's the, the thing that we wanted to, to, to achieve here with the library. Uh, no, that's the point. Uh, there, uh, we we wanted to to make make it as an, uh, as an extension of what Spring does nowadays. So the way Spring constructs the the factories and all the beans, uh, we just plug into this this way. So if eventually, let's say, Spring changes a little bit in the way uh, creates the connect connection factories. 
uh, Moot Revenue is going to be using the same method as Spring, so it's not going to be a problem. If the broker is updated and is still compatible with Spring, it's going to be compatible with Moot Revenue. It's not a problem. That's my point when I mentioned that we wanted to have an extension to what Spring does. We do not implement this ourselves. We plug into a Spring, we create other flows. Configuring them then on each broker level, or uh, is it per default and the all others they have the base configuration? Yes, good question. Uh, whatever you have, whatever, whatever, whatever you are possible to configure via properties in Spring, mm -hmm. it's possible to be done also in Spring Boot. But for example, if you want to provide message converters uh, and then you create a new bin with your own message converter, let's say, this is going to be used for all of them. Unfortunately, nowadays there is no way to make uh, make a difference between one or the other whenever you produce your beans, right? But there's a way to uh, plug into Multi Rabbit, which is um, I didn't cover it here in the presentation, but maybe we can talk about it afterwards. Which uh, you will provide the connection factories the way you want and multiple connection factories, how many you want, and then we can plug something like this. Okay. Any other questions? So, no. Well, thank you guys for your attention. And yeah, that's it. Thanks. Thank you so much.